How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm going to be going over what I consider to be the best ways to farm trees in Don't Starve Together. I think it's important to clarify before we start that this list applies specifically to Don't Starve Together and not Reign of Giants. While there are quite a few commonalities between the two versions of the game, there are also some major differences in what works best in this case. I'd also like to take the time to define what I mean by a wood or a tree farm. For me, tree farms are areas of about 80 or so evergreen trees which are planted very closely together. If you don't limit the amount per farm you'll encounter desynced tree growth when harvesting. This means that some of the trees in your large tree farm will be at the wrong stage of growth when you're ready to harvest most of the trees. So with that out of the way let's get started. Number one, weather panes. Weather panes are hands down the best tool for harvesting wood in Don't Starve. Not only is it super fast, but it also upturns the tree stumps as well, saving you time and increasing the amount of wood you gather. Given their resource requirements, weather panes are not easily accessible for the first couple of seasons if you start in the autumn, but once built will quickly become your favorite way to harvest an entire tree farm in a record amount of time. Depending upon your luck, you should be able to harvest one standard sized tree farm with one weather pane quite easily. Weather panes are simple, effective, and fun. What more could one ask for? Number two, pigmen. What I like most about pigmen when it comes to farming trees is how accessible they are. For the low cost of some monster meat, they'll work for you all afternoon. The downside though is that pigmen won't dig up the stumps and they refuse to chop at dusk or during the night, seriously limiting the time you can use them. At daybreak, start by feeding seven or so pigmen some monster meat. You'll want to start as soon as it's morning to take full advantage of daytime hours as pigmen stop chopping when the evening starts. To get the pigs chopped, Chopping, pull out your axe and start chopping down some trees yourself. You can take a break in between to dig up stumps or pick up logs, and if the pigmen you recruited stop chopping, simply pull out your axe and commence chopping once more. One of the other advantages to using pigmen is they'll help you kill any tree guards that spawn as a result of the chopping operations, and you'll likely score a few pig drops from any of the pigs the tree guards kill. Given how picky pigs are about only working during the daytime hours, the best season to harvest wood with them would be in the autumn. Them. Number 3. Maxwell Maxwell can use his shadows to great effect when it comes to farming wood in Don't Starve Together. He has both shadow loggers and shadow diggers available to him, which will work autonomously, leaving Maxwell free to pick up the drops or fight enemies that might threaten the shadows while they work. The specific reason I put Maxwell so far down this list is it requires picking a specific character to utilize the shadows, but if you are the type who enjoys resource hoarding, you might not mind his downsides. Maxwell can use his Codex Umbra book to craft shadows of himself which allow automated chopping and digging of trees from any tree farm you create. The most common shadow composition I see is three shadow loggers to chop and one shadow digger to remove the stumps. This way Maxwell still has enough sanity to prevent nightmares from attacking and can focus on picking up the wood. Care should be taken though to ensure that if tree guards do spawn that you are available to fight them as tree guards can easily kill Maxwell's shadows shadows. Number 4. Woody While Woody isn't quite as productive a character as Maxwell, when it comes to farming trees, he can hold his own and is more productive when logging than any other character excluding Maxwell. His special item, Lucy the Axe, has infinite durability and cuts trees down roughly twice as fast as a normal axe, while in the were-beaver form, Woody can dig up stumps. Woody is honestly one of the methods I'm listing here that I have the least experience with. To use him to farm trees is a constant balance between his normal state and the state of the were beaver unless you don't mind eating into the profits to avoid the were beaver form. However, being the were beaver comes in handy for digging up tree stumps, something Lucy is incapable of. While Woody, as a character, is more accessible than most of the tree farming alternatives, he's still a character that just doesn't excite me due to his pervasive need to munch down the spoils of your tree farm during normal gameplay. But for those who can't stomach Maxwell's low stats, Woody makes a decent alternative and he can plan pine cones for sanity which could help newer players. Number 5. Berger 
Berger is a seasonal boss that can spawn as soon as summer ends. While he's dangerous to keep around, he can farm trees quite effectively using his ground pound attack, and the tree guards he's likely to spawn spare you the trouble of having to kill Berger yourself. I've been surprised by the number of players unaware of just how good Berger is at farming trees. If you've planted an area, make sure you go there when you first hear Berger's warning growl. Once he spawns, the most effective way to get him to farm your trees is to bait out his attacks. His ground pound is especially effective, though care should be taken to avoid allowing Berger to walk over trees as this no longer yields any logs or pine cones. Another great thing about allowing Berger to do your tree farming is that any tree guards that spawn when Berger is knocking down trees will fight Berger by default, making him much easier to kill when the time comes to finish Berger off yourself. Though for less experienced players attempting to use Berger to farm trees, extra care should be taken to avoid getting hit by Berger or losing too much sanity during the process. While you may be capable of dealing with Berger or shadow creatures, both at the same time could spell your demise. Lastly, number 6, the reanimated skeleton. While the reanimated skeleton almost falls into the category of being a gimmick like the clockwork rook, when it comes to farming trees it's still worthy of your consideration if you spend a significant amount of time underground. The reanimated skeleton can quickly fell an entire forest just by walking through it while chasing the player. Most players won't ever consider using the reanimated skeleton and for those who do the rewards aren't all that great. To get started you'll need 8 fossil pieces from the caves and the atrium heart from defeating the shadow clockwork pieces. After achieving all of this, you'll need to plant your tree farm in the caves because the reanimated skeleton won't remain on the surface during the day, and then activate the reanimated skeleton and use his aggro towards you to lead him around your tree farm, allowing him to knock the trees over by walking into them. Unlike Berger, you'll actually get the normal drops when the animated skeleton walks into these trees. One of the really tricky things about this tactic is that if tree guards fight the reanimated skeleton, skeleton, you'll need to finish the job there and then, as a damaged skeleton will likely use the bone cage attack against you unless you have the shadow thurible to befriend him instead. Either way, this method is for advanced players and isn't something I'd recommend for farming trees except as a last resort. So there you have it, using one of the previously listed methods is how I manage my tree farms. I did my best to ensure the accuracy of the information presented, but if I made an error, message me and I'll add a note at the top of the description with the correction. If you have a method of farming trees that I didn't mention here, let me know below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.